Good morning and welcome to City Conversations. Today we're here to talk about the transportation system we have within the city of Fayetteville. Being the sixth largest city in North Carolina, we certainly have a need for helping our residents and citizens get across the city. And so the good news is from our side, we actually have that department here within the city of Fayetteville called FAST, the Fayetteville Area System of Transit, that operates 27 buses across 18 routes in the city to help our 208 plus thousand residents have the capability to move. So with us today, we have our transit director, Randy Hume, yes. and our civil rights program analyst, Chanel Harris. Yes. Chanel, before we go too much farther, I am gonna comment on the socks. You mentioned last time, you were gonna wear your crazy socks and you didn't. So at least we got the shirt and my socks to match. Well, I, I wore my fun socks yesterday, okay, so I was, well, I was lost today. Next time you come on here, you gotta wear the socks. Okay. Yeah. So uh, both of you, tell me how long you've been with the city for. Randy, why don't we start with you? Okay, I've been, I've been here just over seven years. Came here from Austin, Texas, and uh, have really enjoyed it. It's been a really fun system to work with. And were you doing transportation in your previous job as well? Yes, I was. I've, I've been in transportation almost 40 years, and uh, the last one was in Austin. I was the chief financial officer there for the uh, Capital Metro Metropolitan you, Transit You've Authority. been doing this for a while. Yes, I have. I got out of the Navy in 1978 and started first job in transit and stayed with it. Were you doing logistics in the Navy as well? I was, I was just a supply officer. Yes. Okay, so it paid off well, that's good. That's I good guess to so. See. And, and, and Chanel, how about you? How long have you been with the city for? I've been with the city for three years. And what did you do before you came to the city? Oh, I've done, I've done a lot of things, but for the most part, my local government career has been in community development and planning. Okay. So I've worked, I've worked for the city of Jacksonville, I've worked for the Department of Commerce, and I've done internships, I've worked on Capitol Hill, um, and I've also been an adjunct professor at Fayetteville Tech. I did not know that. It's pretty neat, too, when you think about that, too, with the experience that both of you bring to the city, that really, it truly is a profession and a professional thing. And, and having both of you with your experience, I know, is a very helpful thing. Uh, so uh, let's start with talking about what that professionalism brings and what you've brought with, most recently, the new transit center that we've got here city, in the city, uh, which we opened, geez, I forget, was it six months ago? Yeah, it was in maybe? November. In November. So tell me, Randy, a little bit about the transit center and what that's done for our city. Well, it, it, it has just given us a whole new face of, of transit of fast, and particularly it's a nice, convenient, it's a safe, uh, very welcoming space, the, the, both for fast buses as well as Greyhound and Megabus. And uh, we all meet there together. Uh, you can buy tickets there. Uh, we, it's, it's, it's almost like being in an, in an airport. In fact, had a customer when I was leaving uh, a couple weeks ago as I came down, she looked up and said, this is the nicest bus system, I've, bus station I've ever been in. So right. that, that was very nice to hear. Well, that is good. And, and it's funny you say that because I was over at your blood drive yesterday and we were sitting in the bus out front of the, uh, the transit center and the lady that was in there said, this bus, the bus station is really nice. She said, it really puts us on par with the other cities around here and the big cities and it, and it really does. So, and it's right uh, in the heart of downtown. It's yeah. right where everything's happening with the construction and everything else. So yeah. we're real excited to be there. No, it, that's huge. And uh, tell me about what either of you, what most of the folks who use the buses do. We can go to work, we can go to school, go to church, go to lots of different places. But what are the most of the folks seem to use buses for in our city? Well, they're um, well. According to our surveys, they use it to do a, a lot of things. You know, all of the things that you mentioned. But primarily, they're using it to get to work, which is a good economic driver to make sure that people can um, be uh, proponents in our um, economy. You know, that is fantastic. And I mean, you're really giving people options for transportation that they, they might not have otherwise. And, and how many folks do you have riding the buses every day? We have about 5,500 on a regular weekday, uh, on a regular day. Some days are up than the others. We have free Thursdays for seniors and disabled, and so the ridership jumps those days. I did not know that. Yeah. I did not know that. And I know we also serve a, uh, a special access needs community as well. Can you talk a little bit about what those who might need help with uh, can do in terms of their access to a bus system? That would be our um, fast, fast track um, paratransit services and that is uh, predominantly for people that have um, mobility needs or mental or cognitive um, impairments that prevent them from using our fixed route system. That's a demand response system and so they'll pick them up at their homes and take them to wherever they need to go throughout the city. Okay, and I think we talked a little bit about before the show too. I think the drivers that run these buses typically know 
their customers, don't they? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much the same people that use the system consistently. Um, everyone has their favorite driver. You know, drivers, you know, we, we try not to pick favorites, but, you know, I'm pretty sure they have their favorite customers as well. Um, and so, again, they develop that personal relationship, which makes the experience that much better. No, that's very important, I think, to, for folks to know that. And how often or how far in advance do they have to call in for a ride if they need uh, the special access buses like the, the fast track system? They have to call in at least a day in advance because we do not do same day service. So it, um, because it's a demand response, we have to know how many people will be riding, how many buses we have, how many seats we have available. And so there are times where we know that we're at capacity and we can't take any more rides on that particular day. And that's basically a door to door service, right? So they'll pick yes, them up at their right. house and take them to wherever they need to go. That's right. Yes. And what's the cost for that? It's $2 per trip. Okay. So if they're going to the doctors, it's $2 to get there. $2, to, $2 come to come back. back. Yes. And they've called a day in advance to set that up. What number do they need to call to, to do that? That would be 433-1-ADA. 1-ADA. 433-1-ADA. Okay. Um, let's see. So speaking of cost, $2 per trip, tell me about some of the fare options. I know we were talking earlier about, uh, before we came on the show, about FSU students, for instance. What's the fare option for an FSU student? What about youth? What about seniors? Uh, the average rider? How does that work? Well, our, our basic fare, if you just want to get on a bus and pay and just ride one bus, it's $1.25. Uh, most of our people have found that it's easier to buy a day pass. So for $3, you can ride as much as you want in 24 hours. And you can ride as many routes as you want. You can transfer as many times. Uh, that, that's the main thing. Then we offer for 30-day passes, we have that. And we also offer discount uh, uh, rides for uh, uh, seniors and disabled individuals and for students and youth. And, and where do you have to buy those tickets from? You can buy them at, at our transit center. So now it's, it's very convenient to get there. It's right in the heart of downtown. We also sell them at Carly C's Groceries in, uh, uh, in, in Fayetteville. And if you were, if you were somebody that, that saw a bus stop, you were at there and hadn't bought one at Transit Center before or at Carly C's, you could stand at the bus stop. Right. And I understand you can buy one at the bus or on the bus Yeah, you can, well. you can either pay your one, one bus fare or you can buy a day pass on the bus too. And so is that a cash only system? It's or? cash only, yeah. Then we don't give any change, but it's, you put it in the fare box and a ticket pops up and uh, it'll tell you how long it's valid. Okay, well, that's, a, that's a helpful thing to know. Uh, and then along the lines of uh, how we serve the city, I know you've got a lot of routes. Is it 18, did I say at the beginning? We have 18, 18, routes, 18 routes, that's right. Okay. Got that, and that right. And that pretty much services the entire city? It does. We, we, we cover a good part of the city. We, we go way down to Cedar Creek Road, 995 all the way out to the Gillis Hill area uh, out, on, uh, uh, out, out on Cliffdale. So uh, we're, uh, we, do, we do cover a good part of the city. We've, uh, we've expanded some new routes. Uh, and with the opening of our new transit center, we also uh, added some services that uh, really linked up some things that used to, used to take multiple buses. Now you can get there with one bus. And, and how many stops across all of those 18 routes do you have? Do you know that number? Well, the latest count was 623. Now that may wow. change tomorrow, but okay. we have 623. Uh, official unique bus stops. That's a lot of stops. It is. Yes. That is a lot of stops. 27 buses, I think it is, right, that run over those 18 routes? Yes, we, we put out about 22 a day. 22 a day. Yeah. Okay, and then in terms of the bus stops you've got, so 600 plus bus stops, how do you figure out where they're going? You've got one that maybe gets only used a little bit, do you keep that? You've got one that's used more, do you create more space for it? How do you go about determining what exactly you, you do from a placement perspective? Well, we, we, we place base, but, uh, bus stops mostly, we want to make sure they're safe. So we, we try to put them in places where people can cross the streets well and, and things like that. Uh, we also, any new bus stops we put in have to be ADA accessible. So we have to have room for a 5 by 8 pad and have a sidewalk going to those. And so that, that sometimes limits us in terms of how quickly we can get in a new bus stop. But uh, overall, uh, we, we try to make them convenient where people... You know, large groups of people are available, and of course, as ridership picks up those stops, we add fences and shelters. Okay, and then in terms of figuring out where those stops are, I know Chanel, we've got this cool app called Transloc uh, that's been out there for a year, two, two years, two now? years, two we're years we're going now. into the third year. And it's neat that my daughter was just showing us before the show as well that they actually use that in Columbia too. So it's neat to see those apps are actually used in other cities, uh, similar ones, where it tells you exactly where. Uh, the buses are at. Yeah, so you're standing at a stop. Tell me how that works. Well, it's, it's real-time passenger information, and so you can be at a stop, and you know, well, for one, you have to download the app. Um, so it's available on Android or the iTunes Store. 
Um, you can um, see you know, what bus stop that you're at. Um, you can see when the bus is actually coming to you. When you're looking on the app, you can see um, at that particular stop how many buses service that stop um, and what routes they're on. Um, you can use the app on, on, on the mobile, um, on your phone. You can use it on the computer and you can also use it on our website. Um, but you know, and, and, and so it's a, it's a really useful tool. No, that's great. I need to download that and check it out. I and it'll tell you when the next you know, two or three buses are going to come by there, sure. as well as when you first open it up, the first time you open it up, it's going to tell you where the closest bus stop is to where you okay. are. Okay. No, that's very helpful. It's all about ease of use and making it easier for our residents yeah. to get around the city. Right. And I think that certainly adds to it. Um, and, and then in terms of accessibility, we, I know we do seven days a week now. We'll talk about Sunday service in a minute. What are the hours that your buses run? Monday through Friday, is it different Saturday, is it different Sunday? How does that work? Uh, we, we operate about 5.30 in the morning to about 10.30 at night, Monday through Friday. Uh, and then on Saturday, we run, we, we start a little bit later. We start, most of them start about 8 o'clock. I think there's a couple that start earlier. And they go to 10.30. And then Sunday, it's a shorter day. It's about 9 to 7. And Sunday service is something that's relatively new. Can you tell us a little bit about Sunday service? Uh, yes, we just started it in November. And uh, it is new, so it, it's growing, but we have 10 routes. You know, we have 18 regularly. Uh, we have 10 routes out that operate on Sunday, and we try to pick those where we thought most people would use those based on when they used it, uh, you know, on Saturday the week days before. And I know this was a huge push from the city council in terms of making sure that we were servicing folks. And really, I think we want to go to church as, as part well, of that, that accessibility. That was one, of, one of the reasons, but I, I, I mean, I think Chanel, she, she does a lot of our surveying we do on buses, and I think she can tell us about you know, some of the things people have been asking for for a long time. Well, talk to us yeah. a little bit about well, that. Well, we try to do a survey at least annually. Um, and so um, one of the comments that is common on those surveys um, is that people want Sunday service. And so on our last um, survey, we asked, you know, where would you be going if, um, if we had Sunday service? And a lot of them said to church, but also too, you know, we had a, a, a pretty good mix of people that also said they'd be going to work. And so that was one of the limitations that people found with the system is if they had a job that, you know, worked, you know, seven days a, a week, you know, we didn't operate on Sundays if they had a Sunday shift. And so it made difficulties for them to use our system consistently because they knew they couldn't get to work on Sundays. Sure, that's fantastic. It's good to see that we're being responsive to our residents' need. I mean, that's what, that's what we're here for and, and, and serving our residents. So very important thing. Now, is the Sunday service being utilized well right now? Is it something we need to keep pushing from our end to, to tell people it's out there? What are your feelings on that? We're always pushing it. So we, uh, yes, we, we do want to push it more. We're, we're carrying about 1,000 people each Sunday right now. We're hoping to get that to about 2,000 uh, within this next year. So we're going we're gonna to be pushing it and make sure people know more about it and, and where to catch it and what the options are. Well, but certainly talking about it here is just one more method of getting it out there. But and, that's and also our, our fast track service, our paratransit service, also runs on uh, Sunday. So whenever we run fixed routes, the fast track service is also out there. Well, that, that's good to know. Yeah, I now, think one of the things that people could use also is that when there's um, festivals and events going on downtown, you can ride the bus. You don't have to worry about trying to find a parking space. So, you know, that's an point. option out there. That's, that's a very good point. Yeah, it certainly saves you from having to hunt downtown looking for a parking on a, on a Dogwood Festival weekend if, if you chose to go down there. Uh, now, what about holidays? Do you operate on holidays as well? We do not operate on Thanksgiving Day or Christmas Day. But everything else is everything else is fair, fair game. game. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we, some some of the holidays we operate a reduced level of service. I think we also we don't operate on July Fourth and New Year's Day, but uh, at least some New Year's days depends on what day it falls on. But uh, on Labor Day, Memorial Day, uh, the only other days we operate a short day. The other time just regular regular service. Okay. Because a lot of people are out there moving around. Sure. Well, it's important to keep that access open. In terms of keeping all those buses in service, do you all do your own maintenance or do we have a separate contract? How does that work for keeping all those 27 plus buses moving? We do, our, we do, do our own maintenance. We're one of the only departments that does that, but we, uh, we have our own fueling facility, uh, bus wash and everything else, and we have about eight mechanics, and I think it's about five, uh, we call them service aides, but they're the people that clean the buses out, uh, fuel them, collect fares, and do that in the, in the, uh, in the, in the evening. And, and also, we, we have both diesel and we operate our small vehicles on propane. And so we switched to that just uh, a couple years ago, and so uh, we have our own propane fueling facility. Did not know that. Yeah. Actually, no, I think I did learn a little bit about it at Citizens Academy a few months ago. Yeah. 
Uh, and that's been going on how long, did you say? Uh, a couple of years. A couple of years, and does it really save in terms of the, uh, the fuel? Does it save it, money? It, it, it is, we're, we're, still, we're still getting used, used to it, but it does, uh, you know, the price of prop propane is, uh, is about 40% less than gasoline. Wow. And, uh, and, and yet, it, you know, it, we don't, you don't get it quite as, as efficient, but it is, uh, uh, it, it is much lower in cost. Well, that's good to know. And it's a local uh, domestic product, it's, we're not importing anything. Now, what about our residents who might not speak English? You know, we talked about this a little bit as we were preparing for our show. Uh, do we have special access things for them, things that are available for them to help get them on the bus? Well, we, um, we refer to that as our limited English proficiency, and those are people that, um, according to census, do not speak English very well and may need assistance with um, access in our services and benefits of our system. And so with that, we readily translate in Spanish, um, but if people require additional translations, um, we do have a translation service that we can access to be able to communicate with them. And where do we need to go? Where would a resident need to go for something like that? Well, if they're using the bus, if they just indicate to the driver, the driver can call in and we can use the service. If they come into the transit center or to our offices at Grove Street, it would be the same procedure. If it's something that we can readily translate with the volunteer translators across the city, okay. uh, we will do that because that's our, our first defense right there. Right. Um, but if not, then we would use the language line. Well, that's great. And our bus operators carry a card that has different languages on it, so they okay. can point, if they can't speak it, they can right. point to it, okay. and then they know what kind of translation they need to do. Well, that's real helpful in a community like ours. I mean, we've got such a diverse uh, uh, audience or, or a number of residents here, I think primarily, or a lot of it because of the military folks bringing folks in here, but just a diverse crowd in general, so it's really important that we, uh, that we have that capability. Um, back to the transit center a little bit and what that brings to the city. I know we've got Greyhound and we've got Megabus in there. Talk to me a little bit about what that's done, how that integrates with all the things you've got going on. Well, I think, it, it, first off, it, it helps join everything together. So it's a hub of activity. Uh, Greyhound just moved in, and we're, it's, it's really picked up our activity at our new transit center. But uh, they have about 13 or 14 buses that come through a day, and uh, uh, it's just uh, the people can catch it there just like they did at the one on Person Street, but it's now a much nicer facility. We have, we have security there 24 hours a day, and uh, we have people there clean, keeping the facility clean. Uh, it, it's, it's, I think it's going to be a good partnership. We're, we hope to get Greyhound into their own space soon in the transit center, but right now they're sharing part of our lobby. Okay. And, and Megabus is, uh, you know, it's, it's a service that they don't require a lot of assistance from us because all their sales are done online. And so, uh, Me Megabus is a it, it's a it's a it's a service that is a, uh, doesn't have a lot of stops between the different destinations, and they have about we have about five or six of those buses come through each day. Uh, whereas Greyhound, you you, know, you can buy your tickets and do everything else with your luggage there, uh, right inside the facility. And do those operate Megabus and Greyhound? Are they twenty four seven pretty much? Greyhound is twenty four seven, so we're open twenty four seven. Gr gr uh, Megabus, you know, with five or six, they're not there all the time, but. That they have buses that come in shortly after midnight, and so uh, yes, it is pretty well 24/7 operation pretty much. now. Well, that's neat that we've got them all in one spot, and they're able to keep everybody together. Um, tell me a little bit about the, the the way that you're funded from the city. You don't get money from a taxpayer perspective to pay for what's happening here. Well, the, the taxpayers do pay for part of it. You know, we're we're we're, we're a service, and we uh, we, we do that. But uh, about a third of our uh, uh, of our funding comes from the federal government through a different variety of grants that we use. About a third of it comes from the city general fund, so that does have some taxpayer money. Uh, we, we generate a couple other things, uh, advertising for instance, and then our fares uh, pay for that extra third. So. Okay, and that's, and, and tell me about the advertising that we've got on the side of the buses. I see some of those come by my office uh, every day. They've got big ads on the side or on the back. What does that do for us? It clearly raises money. It, but the, how the, does main, that the main work? thing is raising money for us, yeah. you know, is that it, it's, it's generating now about seventy-five, eighty thousand dollars a year that now the city taxpayers aren't having to pay for. Well, that's great. That's a good and thing. It all just goes to support our system. And and do you connect with other municipalities? Do your buses connect with Spring Lake, with Fort Bragg? How do we integrate with those around us? So if a, if a resident wanted to go outside the city of Fayetteville, how would he be able to do that? We, co we connect with um, Spring Lake Transit at the University of State stop, and we connect with the South PX on Fort Bragg. Okay. 
So there are options out there to connect to other places. Right, and then Hope, Hope County and Harnett County services, when they come in to different places, uh, they can connect with our, with our buses, but th those, aren't, those aren't time connections. So it just uh, depends on when you get there and when our buses come, come back by. And if you had a trans -loc app, right. you could figure out when they're coming. You could. So that'd be That's a helpful right. thing. But, but Hope County and Harnett County, and, and really other, Sampson, you'll see Sampson County vehicles and others in, in, in Fayetteville, and a lot of times those are going to the VA hospital or to one of our other facilities. Okay. And, and when a customer gets on the bus, are they allowed to bring drinks? Can they bring a, an open mug of coffee on the bus? Can no. they bring food? No. No? <laughs> okay. No, um, we do not allow food on the buses, and they can bring water with a top. So if you're getting on the bus, put it in your backpack. Put yes. it away until you're done. And and don't bring it on. Keep the lid on. What, what about animals, pets? We allow service animals, um, and they have to be service animals, okay. so not come Do you pets. get a lot of that? Um, we have a couple of service animals that use our fast track services. Um, there may be a few um, that use the fixed route as well. It's not, it's not a common occurrence, but we do have people that have service animals. Okay. And finally, all these buses got to move from bus drivers. You need bus drivers, I understand, right now when we are. The city's in the process of looking for bus drivers. That's correct. Tell me a little bit about what's going on there. Well, we, we have somewhere a little over 80 bus drivers that we, we need and, and plan on employing. Uh, right now we're down 10 to 11 of those, so we're real short. Uh, and so we're actively recruiting. We recently uh, in implemented a new pay plan, and so our operators now start at $13 an hour, which is a, which is a good wage. And it's when you complete training it goes up a step and when you complete six months it goes up another step and uh, hopefully that's going to help us recruit more uh, we also require a couple endorsements an air brake endorsement and a passenger endorsement and uh, we'll help you get the passenger endorsement so if you have a CDL uh, with your air brakes uh, we will within a short period of time uh, help you take that test and get your passenger uh, endorsement so you can drive for us so they do need to start with a CDL then that's what they need coming in CDL and air brake endorsement and air brake endorsement well, that's good to know. So I know we've just shown the website and where people can go for that information. What other things might we not have talked about today that you'd like to share with us before we end? I think that we're, we're always looking to, uh, uh, to what people want to say about our system and where, where we need to go. And so uh, we're, uh, convenience is, is the main thing that drives us in terms of making our system more convenient. And hopefully in the future we'll see some, uh, you know, some times between buses shorten, uh, more bus must shelters and benches especially I think we're going to drop in. Okay. And I, th and I think for me, um, you know, we definitely take um, all of our complaints seriously, um, but we also want to encourage people to send in the compliments because we know that there's drivers out there doing great things for our system every day, and we may not be able to see that all the time, but if those passengers happen to catch those things, we definitely want to hear about it, and we want to commend them openly and let everyone else know what they're doing also. Well, it's good to know. I'm sure our folks are doing great things to support our residents, and it is. It's always nice to hear right. a compliment when you're doing something well. Mm -hmm. And well, we just want people to, tr to try us. You know, a lot of people haven't tried us, uh, particularly with the new center. I think we want people to uh, come there and, and try us out and see what it's like to, to use our buses. Well, I'd like to think, too, with baseball opening next April mm -hmm. and, and, and people having to look for ways to get down there sometimes and not wanting to have to go through looking for parking, Although it is available, and we'll have plenty out there, That's right. uh, it, it is certainly an option. It provides an option. I mean, heck, you're only two blocks from the, from the transit center over yeah. to the new baseball stadium, and so that's certainly going to provide options as we move forward. That's right, and we're, and we're looking for some options to shuttle people between those parking spaces and the ballpark on game, on game days and, and other event days downtown as well. Sure. And, well, that's um, fantastic. So we're, we're hoping to do that uh, beginning next, next April. All right. Well, looking forward to it. Well, Randy, thanks so much for joining us. Chanel, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Come with your crazy socks next time if we talk again. All right, well, thank you both for joining us. City Conversations Fast Transit Center and our fast system with the City of Fayetteville. Thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you on our buses.